Dennis, it's your turn. Get ready. What? No! Technical difficulties, do it again! Oh, hello! <laughs> Welcome back to the newsroom! We have an exciting thing in store for you to do. Yes, they accidentally turned the camera on in the wrong newsroom that had the imposter sitting in the chair. He's been taken out back and shot. Do not worry about him. Hello, welcome to Tina Taru. I missed you, my biggest fan. How are you? We have much in store for you today. We have the new patch notes for PvP, World v World, and PvE. Many, many things to go over. Many, many things. I, I wish I had a button that made like a gunshot sound right now, just kind of like faded in the back. That would be absolutely perfect right now. Moving on! Here are the notes for the global things. It is very important to read these notes in order. If you were to jump straight to the section on your class and you see all the ways they nerfed it, you are going to freak out. We're not going to do it that, like that, okay? So, ahem. Hi everyone! Today we're previewing the next set of balance updates to come to Tyria. I want you guys to look at the size of this scroll bar over here on the right. Look, that's how long this thing is. With this release, there are a significant number of changes we've put together for the competitive game modes, but many of the fundamental principles are apl applicable in every game mode. In particular, the focus on gameplay being more active is a big piece of the planned changes. That said, we recognize that there are many specific differences between game modes and the nature of changes for game modes should follow suit. Example, many bosses and creatures in instance content focus attacks on the player with the highest toughness. There is a trait called Stone Flesh, which gives an elementalist additional toughness while attuned to Earth, and it goes off when they go to the Earth attunement and when they select the Earth trait line. So they're changing that trait. because Right now, if an elementalist is not the tank and they switch to Earth, they suddenly become the tank and get murdered. Now, I don't have a problem with that because I think they deserve it, but they're fixing that. They're taking away the toughness and adding 7% damage reduction instead, so the tanks aren't just doing this. Allowing it to play well with that type of content and expand build options. And to pause there for a brief second, this is the link to what we're going over right now. It is in the Twitch chat. We're planning on many changes of this nature, as well as reworks and more. We look forward to your feedback, blah, 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 blah. PvP changes and reward people changes are in separate threads. Whoop, moving on. Auras have been updated to be larger and more noticeable. Quick example of auras. If you put down a torch and you leap through it with a sword, you, uh, you do a leap combo and you get an aura around you for a time. So that is an example. They're making the auras more noticeable. If you hit someone that has an aura up, you generally punish yourself. Very Big thing in PvP, less so in PvE. There is now a buff called Unblockable. If you were to use an ability that makes your next few attacks become unblockable, there is now a buff across the board for that. I don't know what it looks like yet, but similar to Swiftness and Alacrity, there's just a buff for Unblockable. And once we can all recognize it, we will be able to identify it on site. Um, this is what I just said. If you use more than one such skill, it is a stacking buff similar to stability. So someone might have like unblockable with three charges, and as they use attacks, it uses up those charges. Um, downed and allied players defeated uh, on the will show on the mini map with an updated tooltip. Okay, I don't know what it's going to update with. There was already a very visible tooltip there, so we'll see. Um, okay, here's the thing, chat. Let's just say that every single skill in the game, nearly, I'm, I'm summarizing like 30 pages of information for you here. Nearly every skill in the game, if it did a stun, a crowd control, or it was instant cast, the damage got neutered. If it was a big damage move, just power damage, the damage got lowered. Not like, but like, let's say a third. Many of them, you know, got went down various levels, but many of them got squished. So across the board, big hit moves have been squished a little bit, 
and crowd control moves, warriors, should no longer be hitting you, like, very hard at all. Okay? So, just, just, that is a big thing. Second big thing is the, well, that was more for PvP. Let's, we'll, we'll go, I'll come back to the thought I was about to give you. So, Elementalists. Summoned Elementals offer a unique gameplay option for Elementalists that want to fight alongside an ally, but the short duration means that they can die frequently during the fights. To summarize this, they have changed how their glyphs work that summon the Elementals, the big flying imp things. The, they can actually have more than one now. With Glyph of Lesser Elementals, they can have multiple Lesser oh, Elementals. A new if it becomes more of a Minion Mancer than a Necromancer, I might have to make an Elementalist. I don't know. We'll see. Um, and you notice, if you look like all these things here, basically just say the, the, the amount of stability. All of these skills here give stability. In PvP or World v. World, it's less. So five seconds in open world, three seconds in PvP. Okay? Obsidian Flesh. They can no longer mash keys while they're invincible. No more invincible elementalists standing on the point and murdering everybody. Thank God. Now, they're still going to murder everybody, but not while they're invincible. Okay? There is lots of minor notes here. I have already put the link to the patch notes in the, in the uh, chat box. There is lots of minor changes here about elementalists. But the m big thing was about the elementals. Engineer. The explosives line for Engineer is seeing major changes in this update. We're removing several traits which had weak or lackluster effects, such as Minesweeper, Orbital Command, and Blasting Zone. And reorganize... Blah, 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 blah. You would only understand this sentence if you actually played an Engineer. But they're, just, they're changing the explosives trait line heavily. Finally, we're updating grenade skills for better clarity in competitive modes, where it can be hard to tell the difference between the different grenades during the cast time. Now, there's poison grenades, freezing grenades, blinding grenades, shrapnel brigade grenades. I'm guessing that while they're flying through the air, or perhaps while he's raising his arm, the animation will be obvious. Maybe when he's holding the grenade back, you see like cold mist coming off of it if it's the freeze grenade, or green smoke if it's the poison. I don't know, but they want you to be able to tell what's about to smash you. Um, so there's lots of changes here related to the explosives trait line. A couple of their skills, the animation was lengthened. Now, we're talking, it went from 0.2 seconds to 0.5 seconds, but now it actually takes longer for them to use these two skills that are crowd control skills. And again, it's a fraction of a second, but it might give someone with a fast reaction time the ability to actually react. Okay? Um... Lots of changes to recharge timers. Uh, the, looks like the entire bomb kit can now be used more frequently. Um, most of the bombs, their uh, recharge time was reduced. Then we've got lots of information on their traits changing. If you're an engineer and you want to see this, go read it. Guardian. Dragon Hunters are solid damage dealers, but there were a couple of spots that needed tuning. Deflecting Shot in particular, that's one of the bow skills, had a very short cast time became crowd control when it was traded with heavy light. We have rolled the crowd control into the skill itself, so everybody gets it free, and increased its cast time to ensure that it feels reasonable for its effort. Several traits have also been improved for ease of understanding, such as, and then there's a list of stuff, a couple of particularly unused traits in the core virtue specialization have been retired and replaced with fresh options. I found you recently through YouTube. I found you in my Twitch chat. Welcome. It's a pleasure to meet you. We are going over some patch notes that are going to be ch uh, changes happening in Guild Wars 2 soon, and then we're going to be getting right back into it, Wuxia. You're going to see some more gameplay here soon. So, there is a lot of minor changes to traits here. Um, some animation slows to chains of light. And um, this animation was slowed as well in deflecting shot. So a lot of stuff here, mostly about Dragon Hunter. Um, but there are some things that affect across the board. And again, I want to remind you guys, all I'm reading right now is the PvE notes. There is more after this. Mesmer. In this update, we're making changes to the Greatsword and Domination trait line in order to provide a more reliable baseline range damage build for Mesmer. We are removing the Confounding Suggestions trait, which has been problematic to balance in the past due to its power level. Over 9,000! And adding in a new trait, which plays better with the Domination line's boon removal. 
Finally, we're changing the Mirage Elusive Mind to no longer break stuns as we feel that the necessity of including exhaustion as a balancing factor has made it too binary a choice. So, we're going to see this more later. There were a lot of traits that made a skill that you were already using become a stun break, and they took it away. I'm not yet sure how I feel about that until I see how everything, how everything goes. Uh... Banshee, I do see her from a distance, but Muck is a very hostile person, so I, I, I... Okay, so we got a lot of small changes to Mesmer here, mostly with Greatsword and some trade lines. Necromancer. Necromancer has always been designed to be a resilient profession that was light on stability. Since this update specifically is removing some stability from their traits, we made sure to buff their stun break skills appropriately in response. Additionally, we fixed a few issues with minion responsiveness and buffed a few of the weaker minion command skills. So, we have a lot of necro skills that the cooldown was lowered dramatically, but only in PvE. Um, we got a buff to a Reaper Shout. Minions will now show an effect when they are performing a command skill. So when the Flesh Golem is about to shoulder check you and take you all the way to Detroit, you will see him, I don't know, lower his shoulder, maybe glow, maybe Super Saiyan hair, I don't know, but you will see something. And that goes for all minions. So you have a, a possibly time to react. Um, lots of changes to the minion skills here. Um, Death's Carapace, the thing that is in the Death Magic trait line, where every stack of it they have, they're much tankier. They, it should be a visual effect that updates based on how many the player has. I'm hoping that they suit up with bones like Optimus Prime, but I, I don't know. We will see. Um, new trait, Eternal Life, gain life force constantly up to a threshold when you're not in Shroud. Up to 66% PvE or 20% PvP in World v. World. That's pretty neat. So whenever you're not in combat, your Death Shroud will regenerate, but only up to that percentage line. Um, gain protection whenever you enter Shroud. That's pretty sweet for PvP. Um, and then this is a bug fix. Okay, Ranger. Soul Beast, long standing without a trade-off. Okay, hold the fun bus up right now. The trade-off is when they merge with a pet, the pet's gone. That's the freaking trade-off. They tra they merge and they have no pet. So I don't know who told them they got no trade-off, but okay. Soul Beast, long standing without a trade-off, are now receiving theirs. Uh, they lose combat at, in, in PvE, it, yes it is on break bars. The number one time that the Soul Beast has to unmerge with their pet in PvE is when you're dealing with break bars and you need the extra interrupt. Because they get uh, half of their interrupts from pets. Um, but, yeah, anyway, uh, they're losing combat, a they lose combat access to a second pet and must choose carefully which pet they're going to be bonded with in battle. This is, this is big. I'm not yet sure how I feel about that. I mean, this first statement, I think, is blatantly false. But this second change, I'm not sure if I mind or not. So, let me rephrase this. If a soul beast is in combat, they cannot pet swap. So, just like an engineer can't weapon swap in combat, a soul beast cannot pet swap. Now, the number one most popular pet for a ranger in PvP is the smoke scale. It has a stun, it has the smoke assault where it teleports to you and hits you five times, and it has the move where it makes a smoke field and you can uh, do, you know, the smoke combos with it. For their other pet, they might use the one that forages for plasma, they might use the owl to speed around the map, stuff like that. No more. They gotta pick one. That's it. Now that's Soul Beast. Of course, you know, the, that doesn't affect Druid or Core because they don't merge with pets. They can still have two pets in combat. So, here is something different though. Merging and unmerging with your pet now counts as a pet swap for traits. That could be wild. Let me explain to you guys what that is for those of you that have fought Rangers but not played the Ranger. Lesser, uh, what is it? C Clarion Call. And Zephyr Speed says when you pet swap, you get swiftness and quickness. So your speed, your actions are much quicker. If that goes off when you merge, 
Imagine them merging and then doing the classic Sikkim Solby sniper combo where they like merge, Hulk out, and then rapid fire you and knock you down. That's going to be stronger now. Because when they merge, they're now going to have quickness and swiftness if they've got lesser clarion call. I know I'm a ranger, but I don't even like that build. So I don't know how that's going to go. Um, Lightning Assault Electric Wyvern, they've added a half second warm up before it dashes you. So that, again, making things able, making it so where you can res respond to things. Glyph of the Stars, the ultimate druid ability that looks like Stonehenge that you never see anyone ever use in the game because it's not great. It's getting reduced from a 90 second cooldown to a one minute cooldown. Might have to reevaluate using that. Um, Call of the Wild, this skill now... Okay, that's the unblockable buff. Anything that gives the unblockable buff is giving it again. These two are interesting. Axe 3, that's the Ice Axe, and Torch 4, that's the one where you throw it. They're AoE. Very, very small. 180 units. Mm, but if you have, for arrival. example... Hello, welcome! If you have a Mesmer, and he summons a clone, like right when you throw the projectile, in the past, it would hit the clone, kill it, do zero damage to the Mesmer. If the clone is right in front of the Mesmer, it will splash to both of them now. I don't think that's going to affect many other fights unless people are standing right on top of each other, because it is a very small AOA. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. There used to be a trait that gave it the AOE, it gave Axe 3 the AOE, and now it instead does, gives the pet Ferocity. It's a different trait now. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba, da -da -da. Okay. Going into Druid form with this trait no longer is a stun break. Going into Soul Beast Merge with this trait is no longer a stun break. So we're seeing more of that. I'm very sad about this, and I'll tell you exactly why. Do y'all? The very first guide I ever made on YouTube was the six stun trap base build. It had very few stun breaks on the bar and relied on the stun break from Unstoppable Union. To use things like traps in PvP, you have to get your stun breaks from somewhere else. They just removed all the somewhere else's. So I feel like this is going to more pigeonhole the soul beast, the, like the, the ranger stun breaks. Like we all have to use Quickening Zephyr now, and I dislike that. We'll see. Um, there's now a delay before your pet taunts enemies when using the taunt trait. So if you've ever been taunted by a ranger pet, there's now a wind up for it. Um, blockable, blah, 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 blah. Okay, Revenant. Now, I have fought many Revenant. I do not play Revenant. Uh, yeah, I've, I've linked it like three times in the chat, guys. Just scroll up. Uh, so, Revenant. Revenants are seeing a large number of changes in the update. In addition to reworks of both the Devastation and Corruption trait line, we have also revisited several other skills. Precision Strike has been reworked as an actual melee attack, as we felt it didn't make sense for it to be a projectile. We have, however, kept its emphasis on single target damage if you can isolate a foe. Confusion has been removed from various Revenant skills as they didn't really have any meaningful way to take advantage of it, and we've instead replaced them with Torment, which can be used in a more cohesive character build. Okay, so now you die while you're trying to run away from the guy. Okay, so we have a lot of small changes here. Um, we got a few new traits, gain stability and heal when you stun break, or gain fury when you disable a foe. So those two are brand new, the rest of these are tweaks. And again, go to the link and read the Revenant changes if y'all want that. Changes to the Devastation line are aimed at two major areas. The first is that several traits are highly niche, such as Malicious Reprisal and Jade Echo. These traits have been removed and replaced with new traits that have more broad uses. The second issue is the opposite. Some traits are too similar to each other, such as Ferocious Strikes and Vicious Lacerations, and they don't offer meaningful choices. The siphoning traits are a part of this change, and we are unifying the siphoning effect into a single buff for the combat log and making it a bigger part of the overall line. The new Siphon Effect, named after Shiro's classic skill, Battle Scars, is a stacking buff that is extended, sorry, expended when attacking and is more restricted in its applications, but stronger than previous siphoning traits. Okay, so, Devastation Trait Line, new, 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 new. It has been overhauled. It is almost a new trait line. It's like 50% new traits. So... Um, similar to the... Okay, so honestly, if you play Rev, you need to read this section yourself. There, I... New, new, rework, new, rework, new, rework, new, rename. There is so much... It's a... It, like, two of the trait lines 
Uh, again, devastation and corruption are s just overhauled, okay? They're, they're just oh, redone. Thief. Thief Pistol has been updated some to better smooth its gameplay and its associated trait. And, and harpoon guns. I like how they put that parenthesis, like we care about the harpoon gun right now. Ankle Shots has been replaced with a new trait, Deadly Aim, which causes attacks from those weapons to pierce, allowing for strategic movement and positioning relative to your foes. Um... Okay, so some of the thief's crowd control has been increased, but that's PvE only, okay? That's that's against monsters. So, got a lot of small changes here. Um, thief bundles. We did a pass on all thief bundles and found that several were using some pretty old numbers. We've done a tuning pass on these to make sure they felt impactful enough in PvE for both power and condition specs. And then there's a lot of notes about bundles here, okay? So that's the staff P or the thief PVE stuff. Warrior, warrior's rifle has been somewhat lackluster in gameplay feel. Oh gamer, so we're updating it to create rotations by giving its two to four skills ammunition, shorter cooldowns between uses, and slightly longer cooldowns to recover shots. Plus, successfully using rifle butt will allow the rapid recovery of the ammunition for those skills. Warrior Hammer has a pretty good gameplay cadence, so we're pushing a bit further on what it does well, hurting crowd-controlled enemies. Its iconic second skill, Fierce Blow, now does significantly greater damage to disabled foes, and Backbreaker will automatically recharge Fierce Blow for immediate use when successfully knocking down an enemy. So, summarize, Warrior Rifle and Hammer are buffed, and the Rifle is overhauled, okay? Now, that's the PvE changes, chat. And some of that will also affect PvP, um, such as the, you know, the, the buff called unblockable, things like that. But those are the PvE global changes, all right? We got two more, PvP and World v. World. Now, a lot of this overlaps, so I won't need to go through all of it twice, okay? So, um, hi, this is the PvP section. I'm gonna put a link to it in the chat. Okay. Today we're reviewing the upcoming balance patch. We've started with a bit of a process and general thoughts and following up with a pile of patch notes. This post is identical for the PvP and the World v. World subforms, minus the changes to PvP builds. Like I said, there's a lot of overlap. Duplicated for the purpose of more easily obtaining mode-specific feedback. So if you think you've got something to say about this, go to the link and post something. All right. So, um, but the, 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 but these changes are not final, and we're expecting to make further adjustments based on player feedback as well as our own internal review. Some of the upcoming functional changes still need to be looked at for potential splits as well, but we feel that the overall list is in a good enough spot to gather feedback. Future patch cadence. This patch is unusual in that it's more about establishing a new paradigm. That, sorry, paradigm. A new paradigm than it is a regular balance patch update, and the result is a giant set of changes. Moving forward with competitive balance, we want to make smaller adjustments more often. The specific cadence for balance will always depend on our overall release schedule, but really, it will be closer to every four to six weeks, hiccup, while still having the opportunity to make minor tweaks outside of the regular balance update. The goal here is to have better flexibility to fix problems in a timely manner. PvP and World v. World, um, don't really need to read that. That's basically up here. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Damage, okay. This is, this is big, and this right here, if you understand this part, will summarize 80% of the following notes. We're targeting a 2.0 power coefficient as the new baseline for big damage skills. There are skills like Eviscerate, skills that exist to deal large amounts of damage and do not much else. Skills that provide more and more value in other aspects, such as CC, Sustain, Mobility, Defense, etc., will have lower power coefficients. In some cases, we've pared down the secondary value, and in others, we've shaved the damage. It really comes down to what the desired purpose of the skill is, and how much of the skill's power budget should be spent on damage. The 2.0 is not a hard cap, just the general top end of a single hit high damage abilities. Let me give y'all an example you see me do on my Ranger a lot. Greatsword 2 is Maul, the one where like the ghostly bear smashes down and hits really hard. Maul, its damage got lowered a bit, okay? Like it went mm, like 30%, it got lowered. And the cooldown was increased a bit. I think it went from four to six seconds. 
but hilt the the hilt bash you know the the ranger classic is two five two it's maul stun which resets maul and maul again the five hilt bash did decent damage as well hilt bash is still a stun its cooldown got lowered by like five seconds down to 20 seconds but the damage was divided by like 200. it got the rampage treatment that's the kind of thing you're seeing here all right so um Nah, da, 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 lots of stuff. You don't need to know all that. Essentially, what I said. Okay. Uh, cooldowns and durations. We want cooldowns to be felt. Longer cooldowns promote more calculated usage of skills. If skills are used poorly, it should create an opportunity for the enemy to push the advantage. Shorter durations of high impact buffs have a similar effect. Skillful timing is going to be rewarded, and poor usage is going to be exploitable by enemies. In some cases, it's still going to make sense to have longer duration attached to larger cooldown. But most of the time, we're looking at shorter durations for things like stability, protection, quickness, high might stacks, among others. Most boons in PvP lost about 40% of their duration. Okay? So... The classes that had boons up, like, all the time... There's gonna be windows where they don't. Or I think that's the goal. When I read through these notes, that's what it looks like. Sustain. Raw healing is always going to be closely tied to damage. As damage comes down, healing needs to be reduced as well. As mentioned above, we want to see more opportunity between cooldowns to push through damage. So we're primarily targeting skills and traits with lower cooldowns and constantly pulsing heals. So, because damage is getting nerfed, healing is getting nerfed. And that means two things. Many skills that give health, for example, the Druid Astral Form skills, all of those got squished a bit. The healing skills, like your number six key, if you were using one that had a really short duration, for example, Troll Unguent was a 25, the most popular ranger heal, the one that's over time, 25 second cooldown, 20 with the, cool, with the trait. Its base has been increased from 25 to 30, so it'll be 24 with trait. A lot of heal spells that were less than 30 seconds on the cooldown have been raised up. So you're going to see a lot of that. Um, counterplay, blah, 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 blah. this is mostly what I've already said. Oh, I didn't say this part. We've also done a pass on traits that provide automatic defense. Traits that negate incoming CC or grant hard damage mitigation are getting large cooldown increases. Lesser defensive procs such as protection when you are crowd controlled or a condition cleanse, etc., are also receiving longer cooldowns or reduced effectiveness, but not as extreme. Guys, this is big. If you, let me give you an example. Ranger has a trait where when you get hit by a crowd control, it instead goes to your pet once every 90 seconds. They raised it from 90 to 300. I saw a lot of that, okay? Now that's for hard automatic defense. Soft automatic defense was not changed like that, okay? So, general, stuff that affects everyone. That, that's this right here. In PvP, weapon strength will now always use the midpoint instead of randomly, random, Dennis mouth, randomly rolling across the range. So, if you had a weapon that d said it did 1 to 10 damage, it will now always hit for 5. Or something like that. It's going to use the average. Um, so it can crit. You'll still have chance to crit, but the base damage is not going to be ro dice rolling all over the place. So they, this reduces RNG. Okay? So if you hit a guy for, you know, like he's at 10% health and you hit him once for 5% and then again, but you rolled low and you hit him for 4% and he lives with one and then gets away or kills you, th that's not going to happen anymore in many cases. We'll have to see how that turns out. Four stat amulet stats have been lowered slightly to be a more uniform number. Okay, whatever. Sigil of Annulment, gone. That is the on weapon swap, remove two boons from your target on the next hit. Gone. Sigil of Agility, removed. Gone. No more swiftness and quickness on weapon swap. 
The following amulets. Removed. I don't like this one, chat. Deadshot, Viper, Wanderer, Diviner, Harrier, and Seeker. Some of my favorite builds use Deadshot Amulet, and my Noisy Druid, the first one I ever got Platinum with, used the Harrier. I'm sad to see them go. I'm pretty sure those are all the ones that had Concentration. I think all the ones that had Concentration and maybe Expertise are this list. I'm not positive. PvP Runes. If the rune granted Boon or Condition Duration, the number was lowered. From 10 to 4, from 20 to 6, from 20 to 10, etc. Anything in PvP that gave condition or boon duration got... <laughs> okay, it's just... If, if you just remember that, I don't need to read all this. Okay? Uh, examples, I don't need that. This affects the following runes. <laughs> okay, just pretend I read all that. I don't, you, don't need to, you don't need that. If it affected boon or condition duration, it got the squish. Okay? Alright. Warrior. Okay, these are notes I'm going to gloss over more than four. If you look at this, it's just power skills getting the numbers squished. Look, power coefficient, 1.05 to 0.7. It lost about 30% of its power. This one lost about 30%. This lost a little bit. This reduced might stacks, reduced cripple duration. Full counter, reduced power coefficient. It's the damage of full counter has been divided by five. But the days has been increased. I, ugh, it's still terrifying. It's still going to be scary. Okay. Uh, great sword coefficient changes. Hand, they, they, they show it for every weapon, chat. For every weapon. Again, if it's a crowd control ability, it, it went from this to this. If it was a damage ability, it went down by like maybe 30%. Just remember that and that's that will do it for you. Okay, that's most of this stuff. Um, there's a couple of insane things, like right here, Shield Bash. Coefficient went from 1.0 to 0.01. I guess Shield Bash is a CC move. I, you, you get what I'm saying here. Um, <laughs> I just noticed this. Reduce initial stability duration down to one second. Holy poop. Uh, but yeah, there's a whole lot of that. So some traits got changed, um, some some mechanic, but essentially almost almost this entire thread can be summarized by heal the the numbers on healing squished, the numbers on power hit squished, the numbers on crowd control hits squished, and the cooldown of your heal skill if it was under 30 seconds expanded it those that's the non wooden potatoes version of these patch notes that is most of this stuff okay like i'm going to sk skip to ranger because i'm very familiar with ranger and i can explain this like he this is astral form heal nerfed heal nerfed but here's two conditions instead of one increased cooldown Heal nerfed, heal nerfed, but days duration increased. Heal nerfed by half. This one you will see affect the map. The cooldown of swoop. That's when a soul beast merges with the bird and does the huge dash in a line and flies across the map. They almost doubled the cooldown of it. Uh, again, all canine charge, devourer tail lash, Poor Saiyan Charge, Smoke Scale Stun, 0 0.01 on all of them. Any pet ability that was a stun or a knockdown, the damage portion is teeny tiny itty bitty. Okay, it's just the stun now. It's not damage, basically. And this this happened to all, all the animals. At Starbreaker, I don't know of anyone. Um, Maul, the the cooldown got increased substantially. That is going to be very noticeable. Uh, Hilt Bash, the cooldown was shortened, but it's still 20 seconds, and many fights it will just get used once, but the damage is non-existent now. Um, same kind of thing. The knockdown arrow does almost no damage now. The other stuff was squished si slightly. Um, but I'm only seeing stuff for power. Uh, again, Crossfire, this is the short bow attack, which is a condition. 
It's bleed. They've lowered the power part of it, but not the bleed part. So I I don't know. Maybe conditions will make a comeback since because vitality hasn't been lowered. Chat people's health bars are not smaller now, but their ability to heal has been reduced. Their boon uptime has been reduced, and power has been slightly lowered, and CC skills have been majorly lowered. So conditions, which are untouched, might make a comeback. But many skills that cured one condition now cure two. Not all of them, but many. Many do. Um, but yes, w once again... Like, uh, oh, th this was a big thing. Dolyak Stance. One of the two ways that a ranger can get stability, but this one is only accessible to a soul beast. The cooldown was increased by 50%. So, that's the thing. But, once again, this is the thread for the PvP. Now, going to the World View World thing. Everything here is pretty much exactly the same. In fact, I can't think of anything off the top of my head that's different here. Um, oh, well, of course, if you're in World v. World, you can use all those amulets that just got removed and stuff like that. So that could be interesting. Um, but yeah, so boons and conditions, durations, drastically... Well, no, sorry, not condition. Boon and... Uh, things that boost the duration of boons and conditions have been nerfed. But boons and conditions themselves, like just their flat default, whatever they were, that's there's not like a huge nerf there. For example, if you were a necro in the curses trait line, their scepter skills last for ages. They have like 20 second bleed on scepter two or something like that. Like that's still going to be the same as what it was before. So if you would like to see it, I don't think there's almost anything different here. This is the link to the world v world discussion if you would like to participate does that mean no headbutt uh headbutt i know i looked at that earlier is it wait oh it's head space butt there's a space between the head and the butt uh yes reduce power coefficient from 3.0 to 0 0.01 but they removed seven seconds from the cooldown so you get to headbutt a lot more often, but it's not going to kill people now. It's a CC. I meant pet headbutt. Yes, all all CC from pets is getting the, the same treatment. Hello, Wolf's friend. I see you. There's a space between the head and the butt. It's called a torso. It's called stupid. <laughs> okay. Warrior nerf or buff or what? That's the thing, Tre Trevor, and is every single class, you could say that every single class is getting nerfed. So if you take every single class and squish down all the crap they were doing, who comes out on top? Let me give you an example. If Weavers, who gave us so much you know, trouble before, if they're he- <gasps> What did they do to the healing of Weavers? Where is- Where's- Where is it? Where- 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 where? Weaver. Okay. Uh... Um... God, why, are y why does your class have to be so complicated? Hold on a second. Uh, Tempest. I'm gonna da, 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 reduce reduce barrier. So barrier going down. Reduce super speed. Reduce mobilizer range. Da, 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 da. Water magic. Yeah, healing. Uh, healing ripple. Reduced. Uh, oh, that one's not been reduced. This one's reduced by half. This one's only reduced by a little bit. Increase cooldown of soothing ice by double. Ooh, I want to see the I want to see the water stuff. Heal, uh, reduce heal coefficient. Increase heal cooldown by five seconds. Okay, I'm more worried about their consistent healing, not the healing from their heal skill. Uh, but yeah, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Okay, again, that's the gist of it. We, I mean, I could go through here and read every single note. I don't think it's necessary, so I'm not going to do it. So, final recap. Hello, YouTube. Final recap is power skills got, if they were a pure damage skill, they got nerfed a little bit. If there was a heal, it got nerfed between 30 to 50%. If it was a heal skill, like your number six key, and it had less than 30 second cooldown, expansion on the cooldown, okay? Anything that increased the duration of conditions and boons 
does a lot less. The duration of most boons in PvP, about 40% reduction. Not all of them, but many of them. Many sources of stability have been beaten down. Either the stability is a shorter duration, the skill has a longer cooldown, um, or the or it's just removed. Uh, I think an engineer one was just removed. So I encourage you guys, in a single file and orderly manner, go to these forum posts, read all about your class, and if there's something you don't like, post it in a constructive manner in the comments. If you just go in there and your post starts with rabble, 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 they, they're just gonna scroll right past. They see enough of that day to day, I promise you. So that's it. That's it for the patch notes. I think it is much past time for a giveaway. The guy behind the camera has been waving at me for a while. He looks he looks pissed, but he's new. He doesn't have a lot of seniority here. So I'm going to switch it back to Muck. Like y'all take care now. Enjoy. All right, welcome back, guys. They didn't like that I snuck into the spare studio and made a face. They got really pissed about that. I thought it was a harmless joke.